curious, uh, you know, after after last game against Florida, it was obviously um, close game down to the wire. Um, it, you know, is there something that, that you take from that that you think you can improve on? I guess what was the biggest lesson you took from that? Well, I mean, they, they're scrappy and they're going to fight entries. You know, they're going to make it hard for us to get, you know, into our offense. They're going to play both man and zone, whichever goes better for them. Uh, they're one of the better defensive teams in the league and probably the, one of the most diversified defensive teams in the league. And then if they make shots, they become difficult because they're going to they're gonna make it like going to the dentist and you're getting six teeth pulled. They're going to make you play through the clock. And if you play from behind them, they become difficult. And, you know, they got some confidence in here because they made shots. And then finally we made a little spurt to get ahead and then they did everything right in the last three, four minutes. So put themselves back in it. So I'm not expecting an easy game. They've been good against everybody at home, including the good teams in the league. You've got to get out and run then, right? That's the key. Well, I mean, we got to run, but you got to run smart because otherwise you're going to play defense the whole game. So what I mean by that is they're going to play, you know, they're going to hold it for 25 seconds sometimes. And then if you quick shoot it, then you're going to play 25 more seconds of defense. And then if you take a bad shot, you're going to play 25 more seconds. And pretty soon, you know, they like to play offense. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have to be intelligent. You have to try to speed the game up, but at the same time, you got to be able to win the game in a slow fashion as well. How did you handle practice this week? You had all. It's an interesting question. Um, so we gave Sunday off. Uh, Monday we practiced hard, really hard. Tuesday we had Doc Carr, so we did nothing. We just did the sports psychologist. Uh, yesterday, hard and short, and today hard and short. I mean, I thought we had good energy. I want to make sure we play the game on Sunday. How often do you meet with a sports psychologist? Uh, as, as many times as I can. Most of it's for me, not them. I, <laughs> I had a frontal lobotomy this time. <laughs> Last time it was in the back. Um, but he's an important guy. Uh, you know, he, 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 he's one of the few guys in the country that played Division One basketball. Uh, and he... He's, he's great at team building, but he's also great at anxiety and all those other things. What, what kind of things does he tell these guys? Whatever they need. You know, uh, everybody's got different issues from Maceo Austin to Marcus Weathers to Keith Dambra. We all have different things that we fight. We all have, uh, we all have phobias. We all have issues. Uh, we all have things that we have to deal with in order to be free-minded, clear to, to play your very best. Since you're here, what are your issues? I have patience issues. I have enabling issues. Uh, I mean, uh, I've got fear of fear of losing issues. Anything else? You're getting awfully personal here. <laughs> my wife doesn't even know my issues. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, it's I'm good answer. I'm perfect. It was a good answer. <laughs> it was a good answer. <laughs> Is there a uh, when you look at the, at the? I know you're taking everything game by game. Is it when you look at the end of the season of the conference tournament? Is there a spot that you think this team is like a goal or like a seeding or like double buy or whatever? Well, look, the way I operate is I try to I try to make sure that our team plays their very best every game, and then I don't really I don't really care. Eventually, got to play the best teams in the league anyway. You know, obviously you match up better with different teams, but you can't control that. So why even think about it? So obviously the higher you, the higher you finish, uh, the more advantageous it is as far as rest and getting buys and things like that. Um, but really what we're trying to do is play our best basketball when it matters. And, uh, and we haven't really been able to do that the last two years, re realistically. Um, so we're just trying to chip away and chip away and chip away until we're a championship contender. And you know, we'll see where, where that, where, where when and where that happens. Um, you've lo lost four out of six, I think, but the last two games, even though you lost the, the Bonnies, you've played fairly well. Is it, you know, was this team getting over that? Has it gotten over that little slump you had there? I feel like we practiced better. Even before Bonnies, we practiced better. Now, we, we didn't guard very well against St. Bonaventure, but in fairness to our guys, that was the third game of, of you know, a seven-day deal. Right, and the last game was on the road at St. Louis. So I thought our effort was good. We just we just didn't quite have it defensively, but we played pretty good offensively. So sometimes I feel like I'm putting plugs in the you know in the boat that's got a leak. You know, we we were really good defensively and couldn't score. So I fixed that and now, you know, we score and then we kinda of sprung a leak defensively, so I had to fix that. 
And so now I got to do both. So look, this is a good league. Like, if you look at the Big Ten, let's use them as an example, or the ACC, and I'm gonna, I, I know I've said this, but I'm going to repeat it. <laughs> if, you're, if you're nine and nine in the Big Ten, you're pretty good. You're probably close to being in the NCAA tournament, right? If you're 10 and 8, 11 and 7, 12 and 6, they play 20, but I'm just using that as an example, <clears throat> then you're really good. Like even Michigan State, like they'll contend for a national championship and they have how many losses in the Big Ten. So when you look at the A-10, other than the, the Power Five and then a couple others, right, we're the eighth best conference in the country. If you're 10 and 8, you're pretty good. If you're 12 and 6, you're right there to get into the, get a, you know, win the tournament. If you're 13 5, you're really good. So we're going to lose some games. Like look at St. Louis last year. They they were, what, 9 and 9, maybe? 10 and 8, I don't know. But they won a the tournament because they played good when it mattered. So only the great teams, for instance, Dayton right now, are winning all their games. So again, I'm not, look at, I'm not happy with losing any games. But I also have to be realistic enough to know that if, say, Bonaventure goes 10 for 21 from three, you know, most of the time they're going to beat us. And they're good enough to beat us on a given night. So that's the trick in all this. Like, can you win those close games? Did the break you're in that right now, eight, eight days, uh, help you? Did you get, like, I, I normally don't like breaks, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to find out on Sunday and Wednesday and going forward if it helped us or not. I personally don't usually like them. Now, this team's a little different than some of my other teams, and we have a couple guys that log a lot of minutes. So it looked like we had good energy today, if that's any indication. You know, if you have good energy and, you know, you have good enthusiasm, then generally it helps you. Do you have good health right now? <clears throat> uh, we have relatively good health. Marcus was really banged up after the last, the last game, but the trainer's done a good job of getting him back on his feet a little bit. But other than that, knock on wood, pretty good. Since you've gotten Marcus to a, a bigger part of the offense, have you noticed defenses attacking him any differently? Yeah, they're coming at him. Every time he puts it down, two, three guys. Now he's got to show he can make plays for others. If he doesn't, then he's, you know, it's kind of like what I told Sin early in the year. The more you throw it short when they double team you on the ball screen, the more you throw it, throw it, throw it, the more it's going to open you for the future. So the more he throws throws some of those drives and kicks some of those drives, the more he'll be open in the future. Because until he shows he can kick them, they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're going to shrink that floor and really make it hard on them. Since your third year, do you find more doors, recruiting doors opening up for you as you travel the country and make phone calls? That's a, that's a good question. I mean, I think we, I can't comment on it, but I think, I think the more you win, the more doors open. But I've always felt pretty well received since I've been here. Like, I haven't been, I haven't had trouble getting in anybody's door. Has you gotten better now that you're in your third year? You're winning? I don't know, I'd say it's about the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so hard to judge because we don't have a lot of scholarships. You know, because we did our job early. You know, so, you know, we'll see. You know, if we go to the tournament, you know, we do some good things, I think it becomes easier. I think they know we're not a slouch anymore. You know, we don't have to sell the dream that Duquesne, ha Duquesne can't win. We can win, now can we win? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Right. That's, that's, that's harder, harder than it appears. So these next couple weeks are pretty important for the overall health of the program. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, the, the bigger things now is retention. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but the Big Ten has sponsorship, is sponsoring legislation to make it, make it like soccer and some of the other sports where they can be immediately eligible. If, Transfers me. Yeah, so like, if that happens, like, they all look now at the end of the year anyway, you know, you don't think that uh, everybody's looking when Fresh Kimball's starting for 49. Louisville 49. and uh, yeah. uh, the guy from UMass is starting for Providence and Eric Williams goes to Oregon. Like, they all look now because they say, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Right, and then with the with the easiness of transferring now with the portal, and you don't have to go to the coach, and you're automatically released. And then if that becomes a rule, 
then hey, man, it's just. Is Williams playing, by the way? Well, he's ineligible this year. If he had to sit out. Yeah, but if that rule went into effect, oh, okay. now they're all eligible. Most of them that the, most of them that try for the waiver get the waiver because it's a big legal issue. You think about it. If a guy in soccer can be immediately eligible and a guy in basketball can't be immediately eligible, that seems kind of weird, yeah, right? What's the difference? It seems the difference? like it's common. It's common. It's common. It's just a matter of time. Would you go for that? I mean, I don't have any choice. I mean, I, I won't like it. That's what I mean. So, that, so think about it. So just think about the position we're in right now. So you know what the APR is, right? Yeah. You have to have a certain big. APR in order to play in the tournament, right? So if you want to discipline somebody and your APR isn't great, you can't even discipline them. You can't kick them off the team. You can barely suspend them because then they won't go to class and now your APR is even worse. Now these guys can go to the portal and transfer, right, without anybody saying no. And then pretty soon, if they can go to the portal and transfer and be immediately eligible, now I think the APR or the rule will, will change. There won't be an APR rule anymore. So it was, it was brought in for the right reason so that coaches didn't run players out. But now things have changed. Players are running coaches out. Right? That's really what it is. Like yeah, Gary, yeah, Gary just... Waters lost three guys at Cleveland State that all transferred up that were all good players, and it cost him his job. So, like, you almost have to re-recruit them. The reason I say that is that that's the biggest thing now is recruiting is important, but retention is even more important. Because eventually you got to play with juniors and seniors and older guys in order to win at this level. Do you, do you, do you see the other, like the other side of it, though, like the benefit for the players? Yeah, I see the other side. I do. Tag on millennials. Well, I'm just saying. Well, you like can't you, blame. Look, <coughs> yeah. you can't blame kids. Let's, 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 uh, let's analyze it. So my, my, son, my son, when he was transferring from Akron, right, he visited Ohio State, he visited Pitt, Dayton. And Ohio State, the way they treat their athletes is second to none. He went to Pitt because he liked the coach. He thought the coach was the best coach of the bunch, right? So, but my point is, is it's, it's kind of like who's got the best of the best. Best arena, best practice facility, best gear, best shoes, best food, best travel, best opportunity to be a pro. Now that's where we got an advantage. Now most guys won't think that, but you can develop at a higher level here not being a role player than you can being a role player at other places. Most of the guys that transfer up that don't help them achieve their ultimate goal. But why is it why why is here different? Because like you go you go like Charles Thomas, for instance, if he would have gone to Michigan State, he would have been a role player and never developed into what he became. Mm -hmm. You know, had the ball in his hands when it mattered. Be a star. Yeah, he could not even be a star, but actually have a big role. Mm -hmm. Whereas big role. you go somewhere else, you don't have that big role. So you could make these guys famous, in other words. Yeah, but it's hard to tell a kid that because they all think they're great anyway. <laughs> right, Mike? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got a question for me, big man? Uh, oh, you got a little nervous. You froze, froze me up. Froze this time. you up. Okay. <laughs> I had been prepared before. I thought I, I, I you were going to ask me. You know, I got you. you. Know, I'll, I'll figure it out. I got you. <laughs> Anything else?